you have to allow God to turn you into a servant. Being a servant, I, I'm a very selfish person. Anybody else? When, when I was lost, and even since I've been saved, there was one thing on my mind most of the time, and that was me. But I've learned since I've been saved, if I think about other people, and I love other people, and you can ever get that feeling, that mindset, Miss Libby, that mindset of serving other people and helping them and seeing the joy that's in your life and theirs when you do help somebody. It's as rewarding as anything that you can possibly do in your life is letting that mind. My dad was just a farmer. He was, he was just a wild boy when they called him out to be a soldier. He didn't go sign up for an A. He got a letter in the mail one day that said, you're going. Now, we've got Americans in our country like Muhammad Ali that's been made a hero that ain't nothing, nothing but a dodge drafter. That's, a, not, that's not a hero, that's a coward. That's what that is. But some of these old boys out here, they strapped up their boots, Danny, and they didn't have no choice, and they went. And they went through this thing called boot camp. And they became a soldier. They got trained, they run, they got in shape. My dad was telling me his waist was about that big and his shoulders was about that broad when he got done with it. Because they worked him to death. A lot of times these Sundays and Wednesday nights, that'll be our boot camps. When we come in here and we're, we're learning and we're taking in, it may not be exciting, it may not be fun, but that's where we get strengthened is at church on Sundays and Wednesdays. That's where we get fed, but it's a mindset. And you know, something that I've learned that I've, I've heard about is it's all about the man next to you. They talk about the man next to you. Protecting that man next to you. I said a word one time I shouldn't have said about a black man. I was just a little bitty fellow, maybe Bubba's age. And my dad said, you don't ever say that again. And I said, why not? He said, because I served and the best man beside of me was a black man. And he said, he was a man just like I was. My life was in his hands. His life was in my hands. And we served side by side. Now the Christian has got to have the same mindset. Whoever is in this church or out there in the world, their soul is exactly like your soul. In order to be a servant, you don't pick and choose who you're beside of. You don't pick and choose who you help. You help the one that God puts with you. Amen. That's being a servant. It's a mindset. When Chris ran in that house that day, Renee, he wasn't thinking about nobody but the other boy. That's being a servant. Amen. Now listen. We might not get as far tonight as I thought we would. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. This shows Christ as our supreme example tonight. Listen. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Get this picture. Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. Understand what I'm saying. Jesus Christ came to earth and became a man. He was God. God. He was the God that in Genesis chapter 1 created everything. He is that God. Was then, is now. Amen. Do you understand that? That's why we're here tonight. Amen. Listen. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made Himself of no reputation. His deity, His who he had always been, that he became robed in flesh, had no reputation, did not come in power to take over. Listen to this. Took and took upon him the form of a servant or a bond slave and was made in the likeness of men. He came from... All-powerful. I'm getting ready to read to you in Isaiah in just a minute. you got to understand this to be a servant. 
You got to know who you're serving and why. He came from heaven, became a baby, a baby, a baby, a flesh baby, and grew up. Denise, he didn't grow up in the palace. He didn't grow up in the king's house. He grew up with common people. He grew up in a carpenter's home. Do y'all understand that? Understand who we're talking about tonight. I ain't shouting, but it'll help you. We may be before we're done, though. We'll just see where it goes. Listen. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself. You want to be a servant? Listen to our supreme example. Humbled himself. You ever saw somebody change? You ever saw somebody that had nothing, then had something, and then they wasn't the same thing as when they had nothing because they had something? Mm -mm. I said it right the first time. Do you know what I'm talking about? He had everything. Come and had nothing and humbled himself to do it. What an example. Listen. Humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Death did not defeat him. Death did not overcome him. Death did not overtake him. He became obedient to death for you. Listen. Even the death of the cross. How many of you believe that? If you're here tonight and you're saved, born again Christian, that is where your faith is. That is why you serve Jesus and only Jesus. Wherefore God also has highly exalted Him and given Him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of the things in heaven and the things in earth and the things under earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's a very sobering thought. Turn to Isaiah chapter number 6 and we'll be done in a few minutes. A very sobering thought. That every knee, every tongue, every person in this church tonight, do you, you will have your turn. And I will have my turn to walk up and bow down on my knees before Christ and confess Him Lord. With that being said, every atheist, every non-believer, every false professor, everyone out there, everyone in every graveyard, Alan will bow down at his feet, Miss Reba, and call him Lord. Can I ask you tonight, can anybody think of a reason why you wouldn't want to serve him? Can I tell you, He's Jehovah Jireh. He's God provider. Before I get into this, let me tell you what happened to me today. God provides. He's real. His Holy Spirit's real. Mel, He can provide like that the smallest and the biggest things. Now listen to this. I rode down the road this morning going to put a little bit of money in the bank. And I, I looked at my clock. It was 9.15, right? But it was really 8.15. So the bank wasn't open. So there's this place down there, Don's, what is it, Char Grill, Matt? So I thought, I'll get me something to eat. Well, I pull in, I pilfer around my car, got a little Subaru out back, a little junker. And I get out of it and I shut my door and it goes, beep, beep. And I said, uh-oh. Uh-oh. There's my keys. So I started to call Matt because I had a set of keys. I know Matt was busy. I started to call Danny because I know Danny come and I thought, I got to figure this out. So I got me a piece of fence. They had the fence back there that broke down. So I got me a piece of fence about this long, Dan. And I worked till my hand was cramping. I mean, I had that thing going through the side window and it was that much too short. <laughs> and I stepped back and I said, Lord, I need your help. And I was serious. I said, please get me out of this so I ain't got to bother nobody. And there's this fella, an Indian fella, got out of his car. And he said, what are you doing? Because I was doing like this. And I said, I've locked my keys in my car. He said, 
don't do that. <laughs> he said, wait a minute. And he got on his phone and he called. He said, help's on the way. Well, fella pulled in. I'm talking five minutes at the most. And I'm exaggerating at five minutes. Fella pulled in, jumped out of a rollback, stuck a thing in my window, pumped it up, stuck a thing in there and unlocked it. I said, what do I owe you? He said, boss man said, don't worry about it. Guy pulled in on the wrecker service. Covered my bill. Right there on the spot. Now that might not sound like a big deal to you. But B and I said 30 seconds before he looked at me and said, don't do that. God sent that man right there. God sent that man right there on the spot. My car was unlocked and I was heading up the road. Thanking God. For what had just happened. Now honey, that might not seem like a big deal, but that is Jehovah Jireh. That is God provides. Now why wouldn't we want to serve Him? Muhammad couldn't have done that. Uh, uh, none of the false gods couldn't have done that. None of them. Baal couldn't have done it. No, none of them could have done it. God let that piece of fence, Dan, that I broke down, be that much too short to show me that he could, he could do it. That He is God. Oh, He can take care of the big things and the small things. But He came. How many of you believe He came in the form of a man? Died on the cross. Resurrection after three days. Well, I believe that. I believe it. I'm excited about it. That's my salvation. That's my salvation. But I want you to listen to this right here. Isaiah pretty much wrote the whole New Testament, do we, in the book of Isaiah. He, he told, prophesied the whole thing, what was going to happen. But I want you to listen to what he saw. And we'll go home right now in just a minute. Isaiah chapter number 6. If you have any place, say Amen. Verse number 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I, I saw also the Lord sitting high, or sitting upon a throne, High and lifted up in his train, filled the temple. Now I want you to imagine this, what Isaiah saw in this vision that the Lord gave him. He saw the Lord, which is Jesus Christ, right here. Jesus Christ, reincarnate Jesus Christ before he, he was and is and is to come. Danny, it was him. It was him sitting on the throne. Isaiah saw him. Hundreds of years before, saw him sitting upon the throne. Now get this vision of what he saw. How many of you would like to see him tonight? Why? Whew. Above it stood the seraphims. Listen. Each one had six wings. Try to imagine this the best that you can. With twain he covered his face. And with twain he covered his feet. And with twain he did fly. Now you just said you wanted to see that. But then these, these, these creatures, these holy creatures, have been in His presence probably since the beginning. They cover their face. They cover their eyes. He's so holy, they can't look at Him. They cover their feet and they're flying around the throne. How many of you believe that? I believe it because the Bible says it. I want you to get a picture of this now. And one cried to another, and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. I believe they kept crying and kept crying and kept crying all through eternity past. Holy, holy, holy. With their face covered, their feet covered, flying around, just crying, Holy, holy, holy. They had one job and to declare His holiness. Amen. Amen. That's what I should have done just because my car got unlocked. Listen. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him who cried. And the house was filled with smoke. Now Isaiah is seeing all this. and can Listen to what powerful worship. Have you ever... I remember one Wednesday night in here. It's probably been 15 years ago. Matt, it got plum smoky in here. About foggy looking. It was so strange. And it felt like you could just, just shake. But can you imagine the power of their worship? That it was literally shaking the posts and the doors. Every time they would cry out in worship. Now just worship. It was shaking the place. And the Lord was sitting there just receiving it. 
Just, just taking it in. That's what he does. He was sitting there just taking it in, doing it. And these, these things were flying around. Face covered, feet covered, flying, saying, Holy, holy, holy. It wouldn't hurt us to say that every now and then either, would it? That was their jobs. But I want you to listen tonight, and we'll go home in just a minute. What happened to Isaiah? He didn't jump up right then. I've seen a lot of people jump up and come running down the altar, giggling and chewing their chewing gum and skipping and leave the same way. Honey, I don't think that's how salvation works. I think when you get saved, when you get born again, I think you have to get real lost to get real saved. Does that make sense? You can't get saved just because you decide to. You've got to get lost. You don't get saved on a whim. You don't get saved because your friends do. You get saved because you get lost. And I mean you get real lost because you realize the condition that you're in. I want you to listen to what happened to Isaiah. Then said I, Isaiah said this, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. He realizes that he is justly doomed because he is a sinful man. He realizes that he is lost and without this king, without this one sitting on the throne, James, he has no hope. He sees God present. He sees God from the past. And he sees Jesus of the future right there in front of him. And he knows that's the only salvation that there is. And he says, woe is me. You don't see a lot of sinners jump up in church anymore, Danny, and say, woe is me. I'm unclean. I'm undone. I'm in sin. I'm lost. You know what that's called? Conviction. Listen to me now. That'll lead to true repentance too. Did you know that's part of it? How many of you, when you got saved, repented of your sins because you were sorry for them? That's how you get saved. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had, had taken with tongs from off the altar. Buddy Isaiah needed a cleansing, didn't he? Listen, the altar represents Calvary right here. And he laid it upon my mouth and he said, Lo, this has touched your lips and your iniquity is taken away and your sin purged. In other words, he's been cleansed. It's a picture of the altar. It's a picture of Calvary. It's a picture of the blood of Jesus. Amen. And that is the only thing the only thing that can save you. Brother, that's why you want to be a servant. That's why you want to serve God. Because that is not... Man, there's so many different things out here. So many things that's out there to help you. To make you better. To make you stronger. To make you more successful. But He is the only one at the end of the day. Dan, if I've got so many medals on my chest from whatever, I, when my, I, I was little, I'd get all my... You've probably done the same thing. I'd get all my dad's medals out and I'd put them things on. I'd put that purple heart on. I'd put all them things on. And had his hat, I'd put that thing on. And I thought, man, I'd like to be a soldier like that. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't. That'd scare me to death. Wouldn't it? You would scare me to death, Matt, to get that call. But I thought, man, and that does make you a hero. It makes you a hero to, to do that. It makes you a hero. But to live for Christ, to understand that you're unclean and you're undone and you have no hope without Him, and then receive what He's got, that changes the inner man. Everything else feeds the outer man. But I want you to listen. I'm done right here. Listen to what He said. And I heard the voice of the Lord. You notice this comes after salvation, right? Right? Saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. You might say, Preacher, I still don't know what to do. I've done all that, but I don't know what to do. Let me tell you right here. Then we'll pick it back up Sunday. And he said, Go 
and tell this people. He said to do two things. I'm done. What did He say to do? Go and tell. Go and tell. Brother, go where God says to go and tell. Tell the Gospel. Kevin, it feels like the Gospel ain't enough sometimes, don't it? It feels like if, Lita, if all we do is tell them about Jesus and what He done on the cross, it might not be enough. What if they don't believe it? What if they think I'm crazy? What if it just don't make sense? What if I tell it wrong? What matter? What if it sounds silly that I tell them that a man come from heaven and was born of a virgin, died on the cross to forgive men, resurrected after three days, ascended up into heaven and is going to descend back one of these days and call his people. What if, sister, what if they don't get it if they don't believe me, if they think I'm crazy? He didn't say convince them. He didn't say, make them understand. He didn't say, save them. He didn't say, change them. He didn't say, purge their sins. He didn't say, he said, go and tell. Honey, he said, if you'll water and you'll, you'll sow and you'll water, he said, I will give the increase. Paul said, I've watered. Apollos has sown, but God gives the increase. I cannot save anybody. Amen? You cannot save anybody. How many of you said you knew Maze Jackson? I'm done right now. Nobody in here knows Maze Jackson. Well, I could have told a story and act like it was me, couldn't I? You need to Google Maze Jackson. Google Maze Jackson's message on barley fields. You want to hear a good message? Listen to that. Dan Maze Jackson said he preached 364 days one year. Now that's a servant said Christmas Day, he took off and he said, I'm not preaching. I'm staying home with my family. He said the prison guard called him. said, Mace, Brother Mace, they want you to come to the prison today to preach your Christmas message. He said, nope. Danny, I said I wasn't preaching today. I'm taking a day off with my family. He said, all right, I'll tell the prisoners. They said, I'll be there in 30 minutes. And he went and preached on Christmas Day, but as much of a servant as Maze was, he couldn't save nobody. He gave his whole heart. said he was walking down the street one day. Denise and a drunk man walked up to him, grabbed him, said, Brother Maze, you saved me years ago. Maze said, Yep, you look like somebody I've saved. <laughs> what I'm saying is, go and tell. And that's as far as you can take it. If you do that, you've been a servant. Then God's going to put people in front of you to feed. He's going to put people in front of you to give water to. He's going to put people in front of you, Matt, to give money. It's easy to give money, though, you know. I don't bother me to give $100. Just don't ask me to do nothing. Right? Yeah. Because that time's what hurts. God's looking for servants. I I'll tell you this right here, and I'm done. Shut my Bible. If Cornerstone had every pew here packed to the kilt and we didn't have no servants, we wouldn't have nothing. But if we had this little crowd right here buy into being servants, and that's all that was ever here on any Sunday or any Wednesday, then we'd have a full house of glory. We'd have all in the world we needed in this church. I want to be a better servant. I want to learn. Lord willing, through this we'll learn how. It's a commitment. It's a mindset. And it's something that you don't got to be in. It, it's not done in here. It's done out there. It's done outside of these walls. How many of you know that? Stand to your feet. We're done. Lord, we love you tonight. Thank you so much. And God, thank you for this Scripture. And Lord, letting us have just a little bitty peek 